so we'll get everybody comfy as we head into these questions. So first question is very simple. Uh, who are you? <laughs> so please, uh, we'll start with Mark and everyone introduce themselves and the characters that you play in Demon Slayer. All right, awesome. Hello, Anime Pasadena, how are you doing? <laughs> Lovely to kind of see all of your shining faces with these lights in our eyes. My name is Mark Witten, and I play Kyojuro Rengoku in Demon Slayer. I like five minutes down the street, so I'm super excited to be at Anime in Pasadena, because uh, it's like my don't, backyard don't gun. Yourself. Mark, stop! <laughs> you doxed yourself just now. <laughs> and the cross me streets down, I dare you. Wait, which cross, <laughs> cross streets are those, Marks? Just what the streets do you live at? What apartment number? <laughs> what apartment number? <laughs> security number. The, well, the, all the, the search is half the fun. Come on. I gotta leave some mystery, but I've started that the game. That is not an invite. <laughs> It is really nice to, to be at a local con and yeah. just drive in. It's, it's just wonderful. Hi everyone, I am Brandon McInnes and I voice Kyotaro. It's gonna be good. We're gonna be here. I really like this stage. Like, this is fancy. Yeah. This makes you feel way classier. You know what I mean? Classy demon. I was, I was told Classy. this is where what, America's got talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who, who wants to sing first? <laughs> I think that's your uh, hey guys, I'm Xander Mobis. I'm uh, confused why I'm on this panel. Uh, I was a guy named Yachaba, who, uh, I, like, he shoots arrows out of his hands, I think? Yeah. So every deep cut question goes to Xander oh, Mobis God. today. That's good to your Someone did that to me on a Fire Emblem panel. I told him in confidence. I had no idea about anything related to Fire Emblem. <laughs> and he was, every time, he was like, so Xander, what do you think about that? Xander? Let's hear Xander's opinion. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Alex Lee. I'm the voice of Zenny 2. Awesome, so first deep cut question. I, I can, I can. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. <laughs> but the first question I have for you is, uh, when you were cast into Demon Slayer, what stood out to you about your character? What inspired you about this role? And uh, we can start with Alex on the end. Um, so when I first was introduced to Demon Slayer, it had already been airing, and I had never auditioned for like a big anime before. So when I heard about Demon Slayer, I looked it up. I think it was around when episode 11 aired, which is when Zenny 2 first made his appearance. And I saw him and I was like, this is the strangest character design I've ever seen. His hair is bright yellow, it's in a shape I've never seen in anime before. It's like blocky cheese spaghetti thing. And he's got a bunch of triangles over him like a Doritos ad. Like, this is so weird. Anyways, huh, I, I it's a, whatever, weird kid. And then, would you know it, like, a week later, I'm like, huh, I guess I was the weird kid all along. <laughs> did, did you have, like, a, a personal, like, a crisis of confidence in your identity when well, you realized well, I was like, you were a Dorito? I saw, I saw him do his cool fighting animation, I'm like, this, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll take that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Xander? Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, like, like most people who uh, have seen the film The Exorcist, I'm not a big fan of demons. Um, I think they need to get slayed, so they were like, there's a show where they do that. And I was like, whoa, okay, cool. Can you tell them about your childhood love of arrows? And how it's yeah, uh, yeah, ever since, you know, if my mom was here, she would tell you, been, I took to arrows very early in life. Um, He's, he's great at cross-section. Uh, yeah, I've always really felt like there were eyeballs in my hands, um, like as a person, not literally, but figuratively. Uh, you want to take this, man? <laughs> I want to. I want to watch you struggle and drown for a while. <laughs> um, so I, I was a vocal perform, like I studied vocal performance in college, and I used to teach voice and stuff. And so when I got the audition for Gyutaro, um there was a vocal reference attached, and that vocal reference was Yota Osaka's incredible performance as Gyutaro. And I listened to it and I went, whoa, 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 what? What is this dude doing with his vocal cords? This is very weird. And I sat and I studied it for like two, three hours, and I broke it apart, and I worked and I worked and I worked it. And so for me, this character, Gyutaro, is very technical. To me, that, that was the first thing that captured me, was like, what is happening? 
what is this brilliant voice actor doing? And, and that was sort of the springboard for the performance, obviously. I tried to match him as closely as possible. And then we put the layer of like English and English intonation into it as well. But that, that's what grabbed me with Q. Oh God, he gave a real answer. Give it up for Brandon. Hey! <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, gosh, for me, when I, when I first got the audition, I, I thought to myself, this is a, a weird kid with macaroni hair. He's got a really, like, interesting yellow hairy with, like, weird Dorito stuff, and he whines a lot, and I was like, I'm gonna give this a go. And I didn't get it, and man, I just, I wept. Did you audition for Zenitsu as well? A million percent! That was my first audition. <laughs> Yeah, um, and, and so after I was done like with the voodoo doll of Alex, um, <laughs> and, and just, <laughs> uh, no, I, I got over that, um, and then all, all the Hashira auditions uh, came in, and uh, it was Rengoku's like, it's his eyes. Uh, I was like, I wanted to have a staring contest with him, and, and I, I think you would win. Have you seen Mark win it in real life? <laughs> he just looks like you. <laughs> Like, does he blink? No, no, I don't. It's actually, I try to, I, I kind of like installed a mechanism to blink for me, but I don't actually blink. It's a, it's a genetic thing. Um, it's like the reptile eyelid. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, reptile. Handles it for you. Consequently, I believe a lizard in Spider-Man <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Everybody, Mark wouldn't place the lizard in Spider-Man 2 on PS5. I have a good idea the lizard from Spider-Man 2 on PS5. <laughs> it's a fantastic game. Play it. Um, they scanned, uh, scanned my face into it, too, so you get to spend a little time. Um, no, seriously, Rengoku, uh, it, it was definitely, like, he is a, a strong presence. Uh, and when we audition uh, for anime, a lot of the time, we'll get, like, just a snippet of what has already been produced in, uh, in Japan so far. Um, so we just had, gosh, the, uh, the first scene when he is threatening to kill Tanjiro and Nezuko. Uh, so that was what I had to go on, and I was like, holy moly, this guy is intense. And I loved it, uh, so much. And then obviously moving into, um, into Mugen Train, uh, I think that the added depth and dimension that, of course, Demon Slayer gives to all of its characters, uh, was super awesome when we get to go back into Rengoku's backstory. And so for me, it was kind of like a double, double whammy. I got hit with a whole lot of, like, very principled, militant soldier Rengoku, and then when we find him in Mugen Train, uh, you get this entire other well of depth to the character, and you, you get to go into that backstory and see that he's, you know, just a, he's a boy, he's a brother, he's a, a son, just a, doing his duty as he knows best, and, um, yeah, I love this show. I think it just, it really infuses a lot of depth into all of its characters, and I think that's why we all love it, hopefully. Yeah, I sure hope so. Otherwise, um, I don't know why you're here. <laughs> she has performed for America's Got Talent. America! Right. Yeah. 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 I need a deep cut of everyone's characters and what um, your talent would be um, if you were auditioning for wow, that's America's a Got Talent. Fun question. What, what our character's talent would be? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so, arrows, right? <laughs> Sanders, <laughs> right? Yeah, Don't worry, so, right? If you can, like, shoot arrows out of your head, can any of you guys shoot arrows out of your hands? No. No? So, there you go. I think that's a pretty rare talent. We had one. We did oh, we had one? one? No, two. You, two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw there was, like, like about two. under one of, the, one of the judges' seats and yeah. fly out on the roof. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Nice. Oh, um, I, I think Kyutaro's talent would be not eating. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like maybe make blood sculptures. That could be cool. Like that, you know, oh, that's cute. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, Iron Chef uh, is the show that Rangoku would just be cooking on stage, and and they'd be like, "This is the wrong show, man." It's like you got a Gordon Ramsay has a spot for you, though. Uh, I think that would definitely be Rangoku's uh, bag, or eating. Or just eating. Let him cook! <laughs> I think Zenitsu would try to like dance to a mid 2000s pop song and horribly oh, yeah. hit the choreography. <laughs> and then he'd get kicked out. I, mean, I don't think he would even end up on the show because they would just kick him out in the first auditions. No, either, but you'd be the one that they reference back as like, remember this guy? <laughs> yeah, he'd come back and say, remember that really bad guy? Yeah. We all had a laugh. Now let's get to the real competitors. 
Yeah, it's definitely one of those um, commercials beforehand where it's just like, meet the contestants, and it's like the bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. I mean, good. you know Tanjiro would win, because he would just be like, he, he could just be here doing nothing, and be like, my family is dead. All of them. We're going to California, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to hop back into the world of Demon Slayer for a second. And so, uh, the world of Demon Slayer just has amazing abilities like shooting arrows out of your hands. Uh, but if you, they're from both the humans and the demons. So if you personally, as yourself, could have one of your characters, or not just your character, but any character's abilities from the anime, what ability would you choose? Hard one. Xander, you take this one first. Yeah, yeah. Xander, you uh, <laughs> Arrows? So, uh, you know, uh, one lady, she handled balls real good. Yeah. Um, I think I would do that. Yeah. I think I... I think that's a talent I already have, but I'm just not sure. Good night, everybody. We're done with this panel. <laughs> Dodgeball champion of the year. <laughs> I forgot what the question was. <laughs> the question was, if you could choose any ability in Demon Slayer, what would you have personally? Well, I don't feel like any of them would really be useful in real life, unless you were, like, intent on being road rage and cutting somebody's car in half. <laughs> like, when would you use any of those really, really powerful abilities, you know? Well, uh, yeah, that's true, no, right, unless you're gonna cause untold destruction, uh... Or, you know, you could do a lot of good. You could be a, a super soldier of some sorts. I, I, I'm gonna jump in and say uh, it, that, uh, that uh, Obanai, just having a little serpent friend, oh, would, be, yes. would be pretty awesome. I would love to have, like, a, a faithful animal companion. Um, uh, I you would love that. You have a traveling circus show. Just yeah. the snake. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just the snake. Just, just the snake. one snake. Everybody's gonna show up, like, right here, and you're like, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and America's got talent, indeed. Um, I feel like there's a, uh, an untapped potential with like the demon regeneration oh, for humanitarian sure. aid. I'd be you know, with like nuclear cleanup, things like that. You know, I mean, nuclear cleanup. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You want to turn everyone into demons so that they can clean themselves. If we could like just have the regen, no, for just me, like I just want the regeneration ability. Right, I mean, right. you could do like a lot of. I mean, that would be people would. All that in. I mean, it'd be so easy to fix. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, if I had any two abilities, I would enter the Olympics and win the medal and then go home. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was the right answer. <laughs> I run real fast. If I, I don't know. Just... You're, you're like having a quarter of a pet co idea. It was really solid. That's not, <laughs> that's not Come on. <laughs> I think we've done that one to death. <laughs> that one is um, amazing, actually. I'm shocked that like no one said. Um, I don't know. I feel like the um, Shinobu is just being able to fall so gracefully, like as a klutz, like just being able to have like petals go out and then be like, okay, I'm gonna fall. Kind of like feather fall on demand. Yeah. yeah. No, so yeah. personally, but that's just the klutz opinion. I'm just like, I would love to be graceful when I mess up. That would be great. <laughs> Um, but I'm really loving these, like, just very creative questions, so another one is, what would your character's boba order be? <laughs> My character's what order? Boba order. Uh, boba order. Doesn't have to be boba, it can just be, you know, like, some jelly, etc. I think, I think Zenitsu would react to boba how I first reacted to boba, because I... I came from uh, I came from Southeast Asia, so back then we didn't really have boba yet. And the first time I actually tried it was in California, and I, I drank it, and I was just like, "Oh, it's like a regular drink." Like, oh. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what happened to me. So I think that would turns it into a boba for a very long time. So Yahaba has eyes in his hands, so having ice drinks. It really holding most things is pretty impractical at that point. Um, yeah, so I don't think he'd ever uh, get the chance to experience Boba. I think he'd be like, ah, f brain freeze. Oh, <laughs> so, oops, forget I said that. You don't I'm imagining like one of those like hats with the uh, drinks on the sides, and they have the two Oh, right, 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 the little Oh, yeah, there That's you great. go. That was some, some Thai, some Thai iced tea. I feel like Gyutaro's Boba order would just be 
everything until it was like black. Yeah, he's, he's got a type. You know, An like, impossible the, sludge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. I'm gonna go with a layer of like a coconut, mango, red bean, strawberry, something in there, just to like, you know, be like, I'm gonna recreate my cake. Mark, that's, that's just your order. <laughs> it sounds right. No, no it's not. <laughs> Don't buy me boba, anyone. <laughs> no, please stop. No, please stop. Stop it with all the boba. I, I feel like Rengoku would have like, a fried chicken breast cut up and just put inside of it. <laughs> Katsu boba? Yes. Oh, no. Mm. The, that, the cheese foam on top to make everything. Really top it off. <laughs> so, anyone hungry? <laughs> I sure hope so. Um, so for the pat, for the last um, couple of minutes, I will open up for audience questions. I believe the lights are messing up a little bit with the microphone. I believe it's there. Yes, that is a microphone, indeed. Um, so if you will line up, um, and when you do ask your questions for the cast members, if it's directed towards one person, make sure that that is clear, and make sure that you're asking a question, not a comment. Yeah, because we got a lot of you, just one question per person. Yes, one question per person, indeed. Got a good lineup. Awesome, so we'll have our first question. What's your question? Um, it's for all of you. What is your favorite line from your characters? Favorite line. Favorite line. Mine would probably, probably be, wait, yeah, I did I just hear you cool say that. that you have three wives? <laughs> <laughs> That's too many wives. Yeah, I think my, my favorite building off of that was, yes, I have three wives. It's, it's great. <laughs> Weirdly, they're all named Felicia. <laughs> uh, I was putting this off, but I do promise every show that you get one every year, so this is your one, okay? <laughs> Favorite scene in Mugen. Oh crap! I've got too many of them. Um, <laughs> uh, on, on the on the serious and somber note, it, it's um, God, I love them all. Uh, when when they when he goes back and you just see his dad with his back turned to him. Uh, I remember when we were recording that, uh, listening to Satoshi Hino's performance in that moment, because up until that point, Rengoku was you know. Rengoku, they were like, all the kids are floating around him, he has a bean head, he's laughing very loud, he's eating everything. And, of course, he's being a million percent Rengoku. And when we previewed the first moments uh, of that, uh, of going back into his history, his voice softened up and dropped down, and, and like, all of the walls came came down from that character. Not that, not that they were, like, protective walls or anything, but, like, um, it opened up into him being that that son that he is, and and for me that fundamentally shifted a lot about his character. We saw him in such a different light. We didn't see him as like the big bro, as the protector. Um, we saw him as someone who was dealing with uh, a father who literally was turning his back on him, and he still had when it, when we went into him like talking to his father, he like turned back into that chipper like Rengoku, like announcing himself that he's, uh, he's become a Hashira, but in his own mind and in his head, uh, you could hear this softness to his voice, this like soft recognition of the space that he was in. And that was really, um, I just thought that was really cool and unexpected, and I love that they took it in that direction, because I think it, it, uh, it really gave a window into the vulnerability, the vulnerable side of him, which, from then on, it, it serves the, the whole Mugen Train arc so well. So that was one of my favorite parts. Thanks, Lashiki. Question. Yeah, what's your question? Hey, so um, my question's for uh, Mark. Could you do your uh, favorite quote in your character voice, please? In my character voice? Well, I already said tasty, so I do uh, quite enjoy them. Set your heart ablaze. <laughs> Thank you.
Pfizer, so I'm wondering, how do you think your characters would react if someone had confessed their love to them and asked them on a date? Sure, I could use a fourth wife. Uh, I, I think Zenitsu would just pass out. He would, he would not understand what was going on. He would just pass out and hit his head on the concrete and then end up in the hospital. I think you thought I would say, Ew. <laughs> I would, of course, rattle off a list of restaurants. Where are we going to eat? <laughs> Um, what part of the show did made you cry? Oh. Oh. Um, I'll, I'll jump in right away. Uh, there are uh, a couple. I, I really loved, I had to turn the TV off after episode 19. Uh, it's right at the end of uh, the, the mountain arc um, when I was watching it and I was like, I don't know, that, that, that moment in particular with Nezuko and Tanjiro, that one I was like, oh, this show is so freaking good, and I had to like take a minute. Uh, that was a really special moment. And of course, like for me personally in, in recording Mugen Train, it's the moment when he sees his mom at the end. And it's not even what he, it's, it's the intake of air that when he notices her and is kind of slipping into that space in between life and death. And that to me was just special. He, be, he becomes like, he, he totally becomes a little boy in that moment, talking to his mother. Yeah, I got, a, I got something off of that too. So when Mugen Train came out, Abby and I, we rented out like a whole theater for our friends and us to go watch the movie. <laughs> and it was like around that same scene when he sees his mom. And uh, so Rain Goku is leaving the world with a peaceful smile on his, on his face and he's crying and Tanjo starts crying and Zenitsu starts crying and Nelson starts crying and I'm over here, I'm starting to well up like and I, I've never cried like watching a movie before so I was sitting there next to Abby uncontrollably shaking because I'm trying to preserve my ego and I, <laughs> and I was so close Ren Goku tells Tanjo to like you know live on and be stronger and Everyone's tearing up, and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, gonna cry. And then it cuts to a shot of a crow flying across the sky, and it zooms in on his face, and the crow sheds a tear, and I go, <coughs> <laughs> it completely ruined the moment. For me. I was so mad. I was like, it was about to be my first time crying in a movie theater. Then you show me a crow with tears coming out of its eyes. It's fine. It's like. <laughs> This close. I didn't cry yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> I think it counts. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, it's okay to cry at movies. You gotta be in touch with your emotions. <laughs> Check out Scott for that. <laughs> uh, the last episode of Daki and Gyutaro's arc. That's all. <laughs> so there was a scene where um, uh, Mark's character is like uh, dying and everyone's crying and then a crow comes in. <laughs> and I just really love animals, guys. So that like, seeing a crow's feelies hurt, that got me. I haven't seen this show, I'm really flat. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good answer. Well, thank you. You, are, you're, you are doing great, man. <laughs> uh, he is here for He is here for it. <laughs> I did earn that. Thank you. A yeah, question for all of you. Um, my question is, um, if there ever was to be a Demon Slayer crossover with My Hero Academia, what would you want there to be? I would want Tanjiro and Deku to be cousins. I would want Eri and Nezuko to be best friends. And I would also want there to be a demon-infused Noma. What would you want there to be? Whoa. Oh. Uh, I would want, um, I would want Zenitsu to be head of the school so he could change the school's dress code. <laughs> To wearing clothes because there's too many characters with no clothes. Yes. <laughs> there's too many. What is too many? Look, best genus. He's wearing jeans. Okay. You look at that and you're like, this guy's just wearing pants. He's not wearing a shirt. Best pants up to his neck. <laughs> Do you like the yeah. jumpsuits too? Like Wait. it has to be two separate articles of clothing, or it's, it doesn't count. I argue that it becomes overalls. No. <laughs> It's covering his arms! 
Oh, it's yeah. not there. Uh, it, it, that, look, what he's wearing is a pair of jeans with four legs. Four holes. Oh, okay. But for two small legs on the side and two. What is a pant leg but a longer sleeve? It's pants. It's just pants. Next question. <laughs> I think we answered that pretty thoroughly. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, for everyone. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I want to see Gyudaro as a, as a, have his own hero agency and have students like interning under it. Though, I, I don't know if it would turn out well. I don't think it would be okay. Can we also get into him right now? I feel like there would be like public health violations. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like building code issues that we lock them. I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like uh, Rengoku All Might energy might, uh, th is there a good synergy they there? They have the same hair. Yeah. Would they be friends or rivals? I don't know, that's, I'm, I'm like, I can't, I can't quite decide one way or the other. I think I, Rengoku should just be on his shoulders all the whole time. Just on his shoulders. <laughs> he's just an additional, like, All Might glitter or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like the small All Might that he sends out when he's on low energy. Small Might. He's like, small Might. He's like, oh, Deku, I'm dying. Small Might, go. Thank you. Thank you. What's your funniest moment in recording? Not just for demons, but for like any show. Funniest moment in recording? Uh, oh gosh, funniest moments recording. Um, uh, it is, I'm, I'm going to take this moment to plug another uh, anime that I, I personally love. Uh, welcome to Demon School Iruma-kun. Uh, <laughs> Kamui in that show, and it's just ridiculous. The amount of fun that we have, uh, it, it's, it's a stupid show, I have a very stupid read-in line. Um, I play a very perverted character on that show. He, he is, he is, but he's like, he's adorable and harmless and very, uh, he, uh, I wouldn't say harmless. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he, he's more harmful to himself, I, I would like to think. I don't think Kamui's gonna get written to any great heights. Um, but at least uh, in the, in the uh, we have we got to adopt like a stupid faux British accent for his third season, and I, I love that show to no end. There's so many weird, goofy moments. So yeah, give that a watch. Uh, anybody watch Mushoku Tensei: Jobless Reincarnation? Uh, so I voice a character named Man God in there, who exists kind of outside of space and time. And the whole concept of this character is in in. The job is to make him as flamboyant as possible. And there have been some additions to the script that I've just felt the rainbow spirit move through me while recording. And uh, most of the time they're accepted. And sometimes Jeremy Edmonds like, oh we can't, we can't. Brent, Brent, you can't you can't just insert girl in there whenever you want. I'm like, okay, okay, and yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, listen carefully to Man God and the shade, the shade is exquisite. So I have an answer to this that involves you, Mark, but I don't think I can tell that story. You know this story. Dragon's Dogma? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell that story. I don't think I can tell that story on this panel, but yeah, no. Let's just say Mark commits very, very hard to his characters. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's an immaculate actor. Um, let's see. Uh, but uh, one that involves words I can actually say on a panel like this. Uh, well, yeah. dude, what about that character in, in that one show? Um, he has yeah. arrows coming out of his hand. Yeah, no, so yeah, when we were recording him, I was like, guys, isn't this so funny? He has arrows. And uh, our director, Steve, was like, I don't get it. And I was like, okay, you had to be there, Steve, whatever. Um, just, uh, uh, this is hard. I, I feel like there's a lot of funny stories, but, but uh, in, in the world of anime dubbing, there's star performers, there's guest appearances and stuff like that, and there's also another layer called walla performances, which is like when you see like a scene of a mall, you hear the people talking at the mall. It's like background characters, basically. And I think my first time doing a walla session, uh, I, I didn't know what to do, because what you're supposed to do is just like, you're supposed to improv for the entire length of the scene. It's a lot of improv. It's a lot of improv. So, there's, there's something happening like, oh, these characters are talking about, I don't know, their parents getting divorced. You're just going to be in the background and just talk about mall stuff. And I'm like, what's mall stuff? And there's just, just do mall stuff. Mall stuff. <laughs> and so, I think my first wallet session, I was in there, and they're like, all right, here we go. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Beep, beep, beep. Dude, mall's, the mall's cool, right? <laughs> and keep in mind, you have to talk to yourself the whole time. So, I'm just like, hey, do you want to go check out that, the, the, 
the store? Can we go see the the food store? <laughs> and I thought, I was like, oh, I'm blowing this, this is awful. And then they, they cut the take and I'm like, is that okay? And they're like, yeah, we'll keep it. I'm like, you're gonna keep it? <laughs> Turn it down. Like, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, it's just like every time I'm doing walla, I just keep messing up and they just keep it. I'm like, we're at the beach. I love beach. Well, hey, what's your mom doing, by the way? <laughs> Do you guys ever insert like character arcs into your walla sessions? Yes, okay. that, yes, yeah, yeah. So this is what performers are supposed to do. The wall yeah. is the time that you can say all the stuff you've always wanted to say in an anime. Yeah. Yeah. There's no limits. I mean, you, within reason, you can't even curse or anything. But. Yeah, dude, in Naruto, like, every time the Leaf Village gets attacked, there's some guy in the background being like, Anyway, so, yeah, okay, you're right, Tempur-Pedic was the way to go with the mattress, alright? I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said you were wrong. It is, you do spend a third of your life on it. <laughs> it gives you such opportunity to build character. Like, I was doing a, like, a medieval marketplace, and I, I went ham into this guy who just, it's been his life goal to be a baker, and he knows more about bread than anyone, and he's so excited to, like, you can, you can do wild things. I love all this. I'm, I'm on a show called Tokyo Revengers, where I play one of the main characters. <laughs> Wall up the show as well. So they're like, oh, there's a violent gang battle happening. Just do some screams here and there. I'm like, okay. Oh! <laughs> Ouch! Ah! Ah! Ow! Ow! And that's the whole wall session. You just do that for like an hour. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my question is, as voice actors, have you guys seen like a resurgence or like a renaissance of like anime in general, especially with like the rise of TikTok and things like that? I think there's too many animes in this world. The <laughs> <laughs> Uh I feel like anime has always been popular, but nowadays it's been especially it's more accessible to a lot of people. <laughs> So yeah. it's, it's a really cool thing because I get a lot of families who come up to my table and uh, it's crazy because 10 years ago when I was watching anime, it was like unheard of, especially in a, in a town like, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of Florida where everybody else is doing, um, what oh, they watch, High School Musical or something like that? <laughs> but then watching anime used to be the weird thing and then now I just get families come up. I had like a lovely family come up the other day and it was like a an old grandmother, and she was like, I'm your oldest fan! And I'm like, yes, you are! <laughs> She's like, I watched the, the Demon Slayers with my kid! And I'm like, I'm so happy to hear that. So it's changed, and I, I, I welcome it, for one. I think it's, a, it's an amazing, you know, thing to see now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely nice, the feeling that, like, we want. You know, in the year of our Lord, 2006, uh, <laughs> if you showed up to high school, there was like the kids who were like, yes. Yeah. Did you have the Naruto headband? Oh, I did. Have yeah. <laughs> show it. Like, anyone remember show it? Oh yeah, dude. Like, I couldn't afford it. I had to make my own out of cardboard. <laughs> Yeah, so like, yeah, you know, like, you'd show up to high school where it would be like, Dude, let me tell you about, like, this cool guy named Kakashi. He's my hero. I'm gonna beat him when I grow up. And people would look at you like, what the... It was so uncool. You don't understand. It's so much I think in a way it's very We cool. won. <laughs> we won. I think also, like, during the pandemic, I feel like there was an even bigger injection of attention into anime and not just what was current what's current or what was current but because of the algorithms it would say like hey you're done watching the show what about this show it came out like nine years ago what about that and that we have so many people coming around like like everyone knows or on high school host club <laughs> And still, more and more fans are getting into it, which I think I, is really cool. I would like to think that right now in Japan, there's another group of seiyus on stage talking about the exact same thing, except they're like, Guys, remember when we watched Spongebob in high school? <laughs> Spongebob, we won! Remember when we used to wear Patrick shorts to school and talk like Squidward? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like, like we ran out of uh, we ran out of show, our shows here, but then in Japan they ran out of anime, and so yeah, they had to start watching. Nice. 
This, this show came on, it's called Family Guy. It's the best thing I've ever seen. I got bullied in high school for watching Frasier. Um, All right, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, so this is a question for all of you. Who's your favorite Hashira and why? And I'm hoping you cannot choose yourself. <laughs> uh, I like Tengen Uzui. Because he is cool, he has three wives. Yeah, let's go! What? Okay, so I'm gonna explain what this is to me. <laughs> so a Hashira yeah. is a meal you put into a microwave. <laughs> Yeah. So what is your favorite microwavable meal? You know, I, the lean cuisines are alright, but I gotta go with Trader Joe's. Their Indian food is shockingly good. You bring this all up. Your turn. <laughs> my, my favorite meal is also Tenga Nuzu. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan of Giyu. I love In my friends. <laughs> See, here's the weird thing. I feel like I said a thing that you eat, and you all said people. So is that. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Plus, you're people. Thank you. You want to see people? Oh, absolutely not. I feel like Giyu gives off lean cuisine energy. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say about a person. Is I feel like if I went on this, I was like, you give off mad lean cuisine energy, girl. Is there like lean cuisine energy? Is there hungry man energy? I know, just Yes, there is. Is there Stouffer's energy? Like, what is this? Alright, quickly, pull up Buzz Fit. Let's find out how much more we are. I have a question for Alex. Yes. Since Zenitsu is obsessed with Nezuko, what is your relationship with Abby? What is my relationship with Abby? Uh, well, in real life, she treats me more like a little brother. <laughs> uh, she's, um, I think we did a, a Blu-ray commentary for Demon Slayer Season 1. And at the time, I had, uh, I attended my first ever convention, which was Anime Impulse, and I had gone into a car accident on the way to the convention, so my car was total. Uh, and I had to record Demon Slayer the next day, like the big screaming scene and stuff like that. So in the commentary, uh, they had Abby paired up with Zach, and Abby was telling a story where she's like, Oh yeah, Alex is a nice guy. He's like a little kid. He was like, can you come pick me up and get Starbucks, please? I don't have a car. <laughs> that's, that's basically our relationship, so I, I like her a lot. We hang out any chance we get, but yeah, yeah, she's kind of like a big sister to me in real life. But thank you, that's a cool question. Hey, ask a question for Alex. Oh, you. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, how do you believe Zenitsu will react to uh, discovering Tanjiro learned th uh, thunder breathing in the last arc? I think he would feel like I would feel, which is ripped off. Come on. <laughs> do you know why they took Zenitsu out of the last season? Because he would have won in the first episode. There would be no season. <laughs> That's why they took his move at the end, because Tanjiro needed his powers to win. Bring him back. Ban Tanjiro. No more Tanjiro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I had a question for Xander. Yo. So I know you did another role for Random Encounters for uh, yeah. the Five Nights at Freddy's what? musical. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie if you've seen it. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I know Matthew Lillard's in it, so that's a good thing. That's my strongest opinion right now. Um, dude, he's Shaggy from Doobie Doo. Yeah, dude. And I'm hoping he brings that energy. I know he plays the, like, killer or whatever, so I'm hoping he brings that hey, energy. Hey, hold on, you don't know that from the trailer. Whoa. Whoa. I the trailers. Oh, God. Did I just, like, spoil the movie? You might have. Accidentally? <laughs> it's all, I don't know. Yeah, I'm hoping he's just like, like, so I'm scooping. Let's fucking stab some kids, man! Did you do a line in your Freddy voice, please? Oh god, what was... I don't remember, what did he say? Can you do the horror 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 horror
Uh, a lot, actually, especially in anime nowadays. There's a lot of input from Japan, which is what it used to not be like that. But I feel that now that anime has kind of like taken over a little bit, Japan is like, oh, it's a really successful property and project, so we're going to put a lot more eyes on it. Which is a good thing, because uh, before, there are some really funny dubs in the past, but when it continued on, they were like, oh, we lost track of the plot. What do we do? We changed too much. We can't go back. Yeah. No, especially with Pokemon and the jelly donuts and stuff like that. It's, uh, you know, so it's, it's interesting because it depends on the show, honestly and truly. Like, there are some uh, clients where if we've been working with them for a really long time or whatever, they know that, like, we're going we're gonna to go in and get our job done. Um, and then some clients really want to be very hands-on with like approving every single line, making sure everything is like every pronunciation. They will have pronunciation guides for words that were like, no, that's English. We know how to say that one. Um, so yeah, it really depends on the show. But yeah, it is a lot less. I don't think we get the freedom. We don't get the freedom to like do quite as much craziness as we used to. It really depends on the show too. Yeah. Like I mean, because there are different levels and different levels of the If it's like, a comedy and stuff, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they let you go wild, but with like a series I mean, popular. Demon Slayer is probably at the top of how involved the Japanese yeah, are yeah, with the they, production. It's because it's very about the problem, you know. Like, like, you gotta make sure we get it right. But Digimon was great. Were you guys on Digimon at all? Oh, man, they let us actually improv in that one, which was great. There's a brick line where, yeah, one of, the, one of the characters I play is like the creepiest Digimon. His whole thing is he wants to get Gomamon, he was trying to kidnap Gomamon to make him his bride. And so we were like, okay, let's try and make this as non-threatening as possible. So it ended up being a very bad Edwin impression. And at one point he falls off this airship in the mid, and his thing was he always had to be covered in moisture. So he falls off, and he starts slipping, and I say, I improvised the line, Oh, I don't want to die because my hands were too moist! <laughs> and they kept it in, and I was like, we never get to do that in shows anymore. That's great. When you said creepy, I thought it was more like, can I take a picture of you? No, so his thing was like, his tongue, he picked gum on up with his tongue a lot. Oh. So I was always like, hey there, honey chicks, come over here! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thanks. We also didn't need that. That is bloody crazy. That, that, that's the line from the show. <laughs> it's don't, don't blame me, blame the person who kept it in. <laughs> Okay, so first off, I'm a huge um, Demon Slayer fan. Uh, I have another good phone case. Second of all, um, so I noticed like um, your characters like frequently scream a lot, like um, especially Alex's voice actor. Uh, I mean, voice. Who does so, voice actor? Uh, Alex. So Alex is good. Like, <laughs> Pull back the curtain. Let's how, find out. Uh, how exactly can your throats handle handle it? Uh, well, with Zenitsu, that, I think that script is the craziest one I've ever seen because every, every word is capitalized, yes. every letter is capitalized. So my script is just like if somebody smashed their keyboard repeatedly. Uh, Wait, hold up the, hold up the, the cough syrup. Yeah, so this, this is how. This is how it's going. This is, this is like an herbal medicine. On the back of it, it says you're supposed to have like one teaspoon a day. And I just chug this thing. Anyways, but um... Uh, for, for me, it was it was definitely about breaking the sessions up because usually anime sessions are four hours. It was about breaking it up into two hour chunks and then also uh, drinking a lot of water. So anytime I would go into the studio, I would drink their whole supply of water and just try to be very careful with it. But uh, it used to hurt, but I've been doing it for like four years now, so I think I got it in the back. <laughs> I don't know why that just sounded so like, it used to hurt, but now, now I don't feel it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you take care to, to kind of do it like piecemeal uh, every now and again. A lot of times, especially in video game sessions, it can get hard when you're doing battle cries or when you're doing uh, creature characters. And they generally try to meter it to like two hour limitations, give you plenty of breaks and stuff like that. Uh, staying hydrated, obviously, but also it, the voice is a muscle, so when it when you say like over time it becomes easier it does so as long as you are consistently working on it you can actually build up vocal stamina over time which will help you get through sessions easier uh, in, in a safe way, way in a safe way in a safe way no just scream all the time. oh yeah 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 no like well for instance you wouldn't go into the gym and be like cool let's put all the plates on and i'm gonna lift this and then i'm gonna go back the next day and do it again you would your body would be destroyed 
So, uh, it's, uh, it's... Maybe yours would. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, damn, man. Yeah. For the amount of plates I load on there, so like, okay, yeah, so yeah, sweet. When your voice, when your hands are moist, for like elderly people to make them squat three fifteen every single oh, time. Um, when your voice gives up, it's actually because of inflammation. Your vocal cords are getting puffy, and so they're not making contact together like they they should normally. And once the cascade of inflammation starts, you can't stop it. Like there's nothing that will stop inflammation. Then you're good. Um, which is why it's really important to take breaks because it allows your voice to cool off for a second But once things start getting really inflamed like we've all I'm sure we've all been in sessions where oh boy Here we go, you know, like I need a break. I need a break And if I keep going, I know I'm gonna lose it and everything you're saying starts to just sound like this when you're trying to take all the grit out of your voice It's it can be rough yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things is knowing your own limitations. Um, a lot of people, especially when they're newer to the industry, they come in like, yeah, I can scream for four hours, yeah, let's do this Call of Duty session, whatever. And then they'll be asked like, hey, are you still doing okay? And the instinct is like, oh God, if I say, if I say no, I'm not doing okay, am I going to get fired? Um, so knowing your limits, knowing when to be like, hey, I need a break, hey, I just need a minute, uh, and even on occasion being like, hey, listen, I'm not making it through this session. Um, it's just not gonna happen. Uh, knowing how to do that, yeah. Generally, directors are very happy when actors are proactive about wanting breaks. Hey, can we take a break? I just wanna make sure like, that I stay good, you know? Uh, I've never had a director be like, no. No, screw you. No, no, no. They, 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 they're on your side. They want you to get through the session so they can get their material. And they, well, they don't like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 come out. It's good. You can take a break. You walk out. Yeah, it's You're great to the You want a break? Come on, you want a break? You're a voice actor. Nothing. All right, thank you for the question. And this will be our last question. Thank you so much for your question. Insert the mic, the moose on Jackson. Move along. Beautiful. Walk back at him. All right, no pressure. It's just the last question. Uh, this is for Alex. Yeah. So is it what is your question? Okay. What if, um, what if Mikey is a Hashra? If so, what would, would be his breathing uh, technique? Oh, and by the way, Kisuke is better off as a demon. <laughs> uh, if, if Mikey from Tokyo Revengers was a Hashra. I think his first order of business would be to get everybody really cool jackets. <laughs> he would change everybody's uniforms, and his breathing style would just be, hey, look over there, and then he kicks up in the head. And he <laughs> oh, Thank you. I'm really starting to think it's not Rosa Fields, this hot <laughs> I'm really starting to think he may be like, I don't know what you're talking about. He loves <laughs> Hungry Man. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for your question. And that will be our last question. Oh no! Well guys, if you want to ask us more questions, we are all still signing here at the Anime Yes, yes indeed. So we can go, I'm going to start with Mark and then work our way down. Uh, where can everyone find you on social media? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Insta, X, I guess it's X, and Instagram, uh, MP Witten, uh, on X. And M. Witten on Instagram, um, and I also make a couple of uh, podcasts as well, Theater of Tomorrow in the Hotel, so check those out, fun audio dramas, and I'll pass it on down the line, Brandon. That's cool, I like that, the podcast thing. Uh, you can find me on social media, Brand Mickey, B-R-A-N-M-C-I, TikTok, Instagram, I'm still going to call it Twitter, and uh, if you, you can search Brandon McInnes on Spotify and YouTube too. I do a lot of music, I produce a ton of music, that's my passion, so check it out. Oh, and if you know Given, the show Given. Uh, I did the covers for Given before I cast me, so check those out. You can't find me anywhere, the government's never tracking me down! <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Alex Lee. That's it, that's it. <laughs> you can look up my other things, but don't look at my Google, because they got my age wrong. It says I'm 36 on there. <laughs> <laughs> don't look me up on Google. Nice, nice. Thank you so Thank much, you everybody!